In this how to, we are going to learn how to use push SQL catch dependency in ASP.NET. In last video we saw that how to use pull based SQL catch dependency in ASP.NET but in this video we are going to learn push based SQL catch dependency in ASP.NET. The benefit of this uh, SQL catch dependency is that uh, it does not have to pull the database for every specified number of time. For example, in the last uh, is uh, poll based SQL catch dependency, every time the database uh, database was hit to check whether the data table has been modified or not, and that is uh, again it's a kind of overhead on the database as well as in the application because every time after every five second it has to pull pull to the database. So and this is the uh, recommended uh, recommended approach because it has a less ho overhead and the better performance. But it, the limitation is that push based SQL cache, de, SQL cache dependency only works after SQL Server 2005 version. Before SQL Server 2005, like in SQL Server 2000, uh, this uh, push based SQL cache dependency doesn't work. So, in order to uh, work with the push based SQL cache dependency, what we need to do is that we need to configure our SQL Server database the way we have configured into the last video in the poll based uh, SQL uh, cache server cache dependency and on top of that we have to follow two or three more steps. So the first step is I am assuming that you have already followed all the uh, previous steps by watching my last video of poll based SQL Server cache dependency uh, and then on top of that what we need to do is that we need to first check whether SQL Server service broker is enabled for this database or not and in order to check whether SQL Server uh, service broker is enabled for the database what we need to do is that we need to fire this command select is broker enabled from sys.databases where name is equal to the name of the database in this case demo database is the name of my database this will give us a result okay is broker enabled column so if it is zero means it is false it means that the SQL server service broker is not enabled for our database so push based SQL cache dependency will not work so let us know that how to enable the SQL service server service broker for our database so in order to, to do that what we need to do is that we need to write the alter command alter database demo database the name of the database and then set enable broker this will basically enable the uh, SQL server service broker on our database and that will ultimately enable us to work with the push based SQL server cache dependency you can see that now after reading after executing this command my uh, ser service broker is enabled here now after that what we need to do is that we need to, uh, to find out uh, whether ASP.NET account has subscribed for the query notification for SQL uh, catch or not. So if it is not then what we need to do is that we need to uh, subscribe the query notification for SQL catch dependency to the ASP.NET account. And to do that what we need to do is that we need to execute grant command grant subscribe query notifications to and this will be the account name under which ASP.NET uh, is running. In order to know how to, uh, in order to know what is your account name under ASP.NET is running, you can simply write system.security.principal.windows or identity.getcurrent.name. It will give you the uh, account name under which ASP.NET account is running. And you can use that account name in order to subscribe for the uh, notification and uh, once you have done that then your all configurations are ready now what you need to do is that you need to simply uh, start using the push based SQL cache dependency so I have already done that now what uh, uh, I'm going to do is that I'm copy pasting the code so here is my code as you can see yes LBL message server enable and uh, grid view enable view state equal to false and then what we need to do is that we need to add some code into global.asx so let's go ahead and add some code into the global.asx file 
so let me right click add new item global dot asx add and paste so let me just override all these things because I do not need them yes now here you notice that we have used two namespaces system.data.client and system.web.configurations and in the application underscore start event what we have done is that we have first retrieved the database connection string from the web.config file using the configuration manager and then we are using the SQL dependency object SQL dependency basically exists into system.data.sql client and SQL dependency dot start and you will have to pass the database connection string so it will basically start the SQL, SQL cache dependency on this database and in the application in the event what we have done we have again retrieved the uh, um, database connection string and then we have called the stop method of SQL dependency object by passing the database connection string so notice that in order to work with the push based SQL cache dependency you will have to start the SQL dependency into the application start event of global.asx and in the application end event of global.asx you will have to stop the SQL dependency this is must once we have done that then what we need to do is that <coughs> we can start writing our code so let me just go ahead and write the uh, code behind code here so this is my code namespace oops and uh, yes from here to here and then let me copy paste and then I will explain yes now first let me rectify all these bugs that it might have uh, looks like we are almost done mm. yes we are done here now let me explain the uh, code first we have a page level variable called underscore con str where I am retrieving the data from the web.config file uh, and this is basically the data is basically the database connection string and in the label we are writing the current date time and in the if it is not post back then we are calling the get data method in the get data method we are again doing the same thing that we had done into the last video uh, of uh, poll based SQL catch dependency we are checking for the catch of personal detail data if it is not null then we are uh, uh, unboxing the cache data into the data table and storing it to the table variable and if it is null it means that there is nothing into this cache then we are using the SQL connection executing the select statement ideally as I said earlier you should use the stored procedure please watch my uh, edu.net video for that and uh, we are using the SQL adapter then uh, once we have used the SQL adapter then what we are doing is that we are inserting the uh, catch before we insert what we need to do we need to use the SQL catch dependency object so here, here we have instantiated the SQL catch dependency object and we have passed the command as the parameter and this command is nothing but the SQL command okay and uh, what we need to do once we have done that then we are calling a fill method that will basically fill the data into the data table and uh, then we have catch dot insert of personal detail data that is nothing but the key and then table and the dependency now remember that you will have to add your data into the cache before you close the connection okay if, if you do it after closing the connection that what will happen is that once the data will be placed into the cache it will never expire so you have, have to make sure that you are writing uh, your cache statement or instantiating the uh, SQL catch dependency before you dispose the uh, command object and before you basically close the connection object and then once we have done that then what we are doing is that we are uh, simply specifying the data source of the get view to the data table and then we are calling the data bind method that will basically bind the data to the grid okay I think we are done now let me first run this page 
so I'm going to run this page now and you can see that the data is coming from the database first now when I will refresh this page then now data is coming from the cache now let me go ahead and modify the uh, record from the personal detail so here is my record from the personal detail so I've closed all and then this is the record from my personal detail okay now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to modify some record from here so let me change this uh, new record and age is 22 fine currently it is 2 now when I will refresh you can see that it has become 22 if I will delete this record uh, before deleting it let me refresh it so I'm keep refreshing now and it is coming from the cache now if I will delete this record the naturally the personal detail table has changed so we'll see that the same has been affected here now the, the interesting point here is that there is no poll here means our ASP.NET application is not keep polling this uh, database uh, for the modification everything is being done by the uh, notification services now very important point I must mention is that there is some certain limitations of maintaining the cache using SQL uh, cache dependency and those are that that your select statement must contain the table name along with the owner name for example dbo dot personal detail means database owner dot personal detail so you must specify the table name along with your owner name and apart from that there are many other uh, limitations also the query must contain the column name and the can't be used all generally we write select all from the table so that you cannot use you have to use the column name and the query cannot use large data type for example you cannot use text and end text to return from the query the query cannot use the derived table or temporary table or the table variable or the view also the query cannot contain sub query or outer join and self join it means that you might have faced a scenario where in the select statement you will have to write the uh, sub query but if you write sub query then the SQL cache dependency will not work and also the SQL query cannot use the distinct compute computed by insert average mean max etc keywords so these are the limitations of using the uh, SQL cache dependency if you are not going to use this them then naturally your SQL cache dependency will work but if you are going to use them then SQL cache dependency will not work